Welcome to module 12 of a course called Coding for Crosswords. In this module, we will get to the pattern hash. If you'd like to see more information about the entire course, please see the links below. Now, we've worked hard to get to this point, so we have the tools necessary now to look up words in our dictionary based on what I call a pattern hash. It's a wildcard search. Um, let me first go and, and let's look and see uh, our original problem statement is this. We are trying to write software that will complete this puzzle. And by complete, I mean construct the puzzle. So I talk about that as a solution, a solving process, but it's really the solving of the construction of the puzzle. We're not in this class trying to write software that uh, actually um, completes crossword puzzles like a human would fill in the answers. We're trying to find the words in the library that would go along here, like for instance, maybe this word is going to be date. Um, and this word could be ogre. Okay. We're going to write software that will fill in those words like this. And it not only does the horizontal, the, the vertical, but it also will fill in all the horizontals too. And it has to find words that match. That's the tricky part because you can do this by hand, as you can see already. Here, let's try age. Oh, and maybe this could be GE. Can you think of a word with GE? I'm already a little bit stuck. Maybe gear. Hey, this isn't too bad, actually. And then maybe this is going to be trap. Um, maybe this is going to be eerie. But then you can see already we're getting eerie, eerie er. Is that a word? See, so I already I'm already stuck where this is probably not a word. Um, so humans have a hard time doing this completely manually. And so what we'll do now is we'll develop the tool. For this puzzle, what you need is something that would look for all the words with D and then blank, blank, blank. And we're going to represent a wild card with this dash mark. You can also do it as a question mark if you prefer. Some people do it that way. We're also going to look for O, blank, blank, blank. And we're going to look for here for this one, G, uh, blank, blank, blank. And then we're also going to look for, on this side, we want blank, 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 C and blank, 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 A, and blank, 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 T. That'd be the first step. We want to find all the words that match uh, that pattern. So let's look at the tools available on the web already to let us, let us do that. And an easy way to find them, there, there, are, there are many, many, many. The way to find them would be something like crossword, puzzle, maybe a word finder. Okay, that's one way to find them. Um, and a lot of these sites will have you type in the clue itself. Now, since we're not doing the actual crossword clue uh, solving, we're not interested in this part for the moment. We want to look for websites that talk about how to look for patterns. For instance, here, ah, so here's our number of letters. Let's say it's three, and let's look for D, and then let's leave blank, blank, and let's search for the answer. And that's going to give us... Um, these answers, it's going to give us dab, dad, dag, da, doc. Oh, di that's, a, that's a Morse code. That's a little bit, uh, a little bit lame to me. But um, you'll find different quality words in these websites. So here you go. There's, there's all the way up to, I don't know if these are ranked or not. Um, but this is the function that we want to implement. So the goal of today is to implement a function like this that will search for our own library, all the words that meet. The pattern that we give it. Let's go through a couple more web examples so you can see um, other ways to do this. One website that's popular to use is called X Word Info. Um, it's, um, it's, it's, it's closely run with the New York Times and so it has a lot of New York Times data and a tremendous volume of information about existing crosswords. There's also of course um, things like uh, things like these um, you know, the daily crossword and then the solution and notes about it and things. But the one we're going to look for here is now uh, the answer finder. That's this right here. It's called a finder. And now we can type in that same pattern. D, question mark, question mark. Let's just say with three letters for now to keep it um, a little bit smaller number of words. And let's search. And then here we go. 226 result patterns for D blank blank. And here, here they are. And these are puzzles that have already been published. These are these are answers that have already been published in puzzles in the New York Times. So when you get to complicated patterns, you'll start to see that, um, that it's kind of nice to be able to limit this to words that are actually real words. There are a lot of crazy fake words out there um, that you can get from some of these lists. So that's the basic idea. You can run more patterns if you'd like, um, like R blank blank, S blank, 
um, that gives us 70 results. You know, you can look at all these words here. Um, some of them are more obvious than others. Some of these are reist. You know, there's a lot of crazy words in the puzzle. Sometimes these were used. If you go look, you can click and see where they were actually used. Sometimes they'll be used in a way that was used for only for that puzzle. So you'll get words in here that sometimes uh, you really don't want to use for your own puzzles or for puzzles you want to try to submit because in a different context, they may not be usable or may not make any sense. Um, but this is a tool that lets you really, you know, understand that. Uh, let's look for a longer word like uh, blank ST, blank, blank, blank. S, S and T's and E's are, of course, very common, so you get a lot of things. Oh, here I'm using I'm using the wrong syntax. The syntax that we use is question, question mark is what he wants on this website. Um, I use the dash in, the, in our code. Um, so we'll search that one, and we're going to get um, 182 results here, so that's a lot. Um, so here's a bunch. Um, uh, ist, Inc, Est Ops, Est Ray. Um, I mean, man, there's a lot there, right? Oh, Astley, that'd be like for uh, Rick Astley for the Rick Roll guy. Um, so that's just an example. There's one more website I can show you that's um, useful because it's um, because it is uh, so comprehensive. It can give you some really weird answers, but if you're really stuck, this can help. So it's called One Look, and this is what a lot of the professional constructors use. Uh, here you use a question mark, so you say we'll say like we'll start with with like the the D question mark question mark answer, and here you go, and it starts with all this crazy stuff. They have ampersands, they've got dashes, they've got dots, and they've got numbers. Um, so there's all sorts of stuff in here that probably I mean here's a you know none of these are really that that good. Uh, but if you get something, if you get really stuck to a really tough phrase, you know, ST, blank, 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 you know, B, you know, H, that's probably too much. Probably won't find anything for that. Um, oh, found it. Actually found one of standard lib H, which is actually a computer term. Um, anyway, so one look, one look is a sort of your last ditch place. If it's not in one look, it definitely doesn't exist. But this is a, a huge library. Um, so having talked about what we're trying to do, which is to implement this function. When you construct crossword puzzles, you need to have access to a very fast version of this word finder function. So let's get to our code now and see how we're going to build such a library function. Now, this is bringing up the code that we finished with, not last module, because last module was the module about memory and pointers and references. This is the code from the module previous to that. So this is the code from module 10. Um, if you want to review any of how we came up with this code, please go back to that module and you'll be able to go line by line through the 150 lines and see how we um, how we built all this. We have a structure called Word, and then we have a main class called Library, and then we have a structure called Grid, which we're not really using right now. We're going to still get the library going. And then we have a main, which is pretty simple, which just reads the library and then calls some queries on it. So let's simplify this a little bit. We don't need this stat stuff anymore, really. We don't need really all these all these calls here. I'll save one just as a template. Um, find word, I think is a good name for our new thing. Um, and we figure out what we have to put in here. And then let's um, get rid of the debug bucket stuff. This stuff let's keep, because we're gonna put that back in pretty soon once we uh, once we get the library doing this find word routine. So let's keep those things for now. Um, how do we want this thing to look? Let's pop down and look at the format of the test grid. Now again, we did this back in a number of number of modules ago, so you can review those if you want. I think this came in uh, seven, module seven. Um, we used the A through Z capital letters for any letters that we've already committed to the grid, and then we're using this dash for any blank spaces. So it'll be convenient to use that same notation when we're looking for a word that spans this um, these set of letters here, these sort of uh, these boxes. Um, let's code that. Let's let's ask that to be D blank blank blank. Okay, that's kind of a nice way to uh, take what's going to be in our data structure and then pass it to the library. And what we want to get back from that, so we'll we'll hold off for, for not knowing the return arguments. So we're going to have a return argument that's going to give back a list or a vector or some sort of collection of words that have this pattern that meet this pattern, just like those websites we're doing. We want to do it in our program now. Um, so. That's the name of the function. Let's go to the library and let's add it. Um, and here's one little detour. Just for a second, I'm going to show you. Um, different people do different things. I have just a simple convention that puts. Um, I like to do this. Some people. This is this is sort of unusual, uh, but I find it really useful to get around a file. 
I always put a, a little a little uh, dash before the name of the class that I can anywhere in the anywhere in the file. If I'm down here at the bottom of the file, this is like line 140. I can say dash library, and I know I get right to there. Other people have all kinds of little editor tricks. There's macros you can do in Emacs, of course. That'll do all this stuff uh, in VI um, in VI as well. Um, but you know, it's one of those things where you'll as the file starts to grow, we do have to get good at working with larger files, even though you don't want too large a file in, in professional programming. And this in this programming, we'll just keep it all in one file. So we'll end up with a file that's probably going to be a thousand lines, maybe five hundred thousand lines long, something like that. Um, so anyway, that was just a little bit of an aside, and we'll do that for Word too, uh, just to make it easier to find things as we go. What we want to do now is add this routine. It's going to be find word, and it's going to take a string in, and it's const, right? We don't want this routine to modify the library. If you're asking it what words have this pattern, you certainly don't want that to cause a new word to be added to the library. That would be very buggy, very unexpected. So that's why I put this. So that's why this const is here, and that's very important that it makes sure that we don't call any routines inside here that might do something that changes the state of the library. Um, so um, what we want to do then, let's do it slow first. So we're going to take the same approach we did with the hash table. We're going to just implement it um, in a really slow, dumb way first, just so you understand what the function's doing, and you're going to get um, comfortable with uh, the desired behavior, right? Then we're going to try to make it fast with the hash table. So here we go. We're going to loop over all the words in our library. And this is the same, I just took this code from down here. It's the same code that we have in the many places, like when we do the stats or when we um, you know, uh, do other sorts of like debugging prints and things. So here we are. We're going to loop over the words. And let's do this. Let's make a copy of the word into a new string. We can just call it t temp. We're going to, that's going to be w's word. Why, why is it w's word? Remember that we are iterating over word objects, right? We're iterating over word objects here. And each word object we have contains a string called lowercase word. So when we get the word object, we need to go ahead and dig out its, its actual word. And I'll also, since we're now good with copy and reference, remember this whole idea, you can do things by copy or reference when you're either calling a function or when you're iterating. And in general, you want to do references. You don't want to make copies of things. It's, it's kind of slow. So the general style is to do this, is to do, is to do uh, it's, it's a word reference that you're getting um, that we're going to be taking. And furthermore, it's not only a word reference, it's going to be a const word reference. And this design pattern is super, super common. Um, so it might look like a lot of words, but it's really nothing more than just saying, instead of giving me an entire copy of the word data structure, so it would, you know, in that case, it would copy, you know, whatever was in here, we're going to just get this pointer to the same memory. So whenever we use w, we're going to actually point to the same memory that was in this collection. And that's a little dangerous because we could modify it. We don't want to modify it. In fact, we're not going to be allowed to. Um, this here is going to prevent us from doing just a word reference. Actually, that, that's probably a good exercise to show you. Let's do that. Uh, so that'll be the first challenge. Um, is let's let's put this back and let me see if I can set this up for you in the right way. Let's um, take away this const. Right. I want to I want to test that what we're doing here is the compiler should not let us do it. Um, let's see if this will compile as is and run. And there is, I know there's another bug too that we have to deal with. So there's a couple bugs here, so hang in there. Sometimes programming you have to deal with this. You've got like one thing you're trying to do and then you realize there's another bug that you remembered from last time. And I remembered a bug from last time um, that we still have to fix. <laughs> so we're gonna put the output A and it's gonna be A, that's it. So here's our, so here we go. Ah, great. So this is perfect. This is just the error that I wanted to see um, to, to demonstrate this idea that since we're in find word and we've said, hey, find word is const, you're trying to get this unrestricted non-const pointer W for every word in our library. We're not going to give that to you because if we give that to you, we don't know what you're going to do with it. That's that's not a const reference anymore. That's an actual uh pointer or reference into the word itself. And if we give you that, you can take that W and do all kinds of crazy things with it. You could, you, if we give you, if we allow that, if the compiler allows this to happen, the next line could be something like W word equals, you know, foo, right? We're going to replace every word in the library with some garbage string. 
Well, find word is not allowed to do that type of operation because it's const. Okay, so we're only allowed to take const references out of the library. So the whole const thing will 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 make sense. It's a little bit of an overhead, but it's actually one of those language features that's not just uh, type typographic overhead. It really is functional, and it catches a ton of bugs because um, it just catches intentional bugs. Like you're doing something that you really think should be const and you find out somewhere deep in there it's actually calling something that's incrementing a counter or it's doing something that you know the person who wrote the code thought was uh, innocent but really it's not like it's actually changing the state of the object so so const is really good at cleaning the code up uh, and making sure that the assumptions about calling a routine um, you know aren't violated so anyway that's enough about const for now so what we can do though is we can take a copy of the word and we can write that thing, right? There's nothing that says we can't take a copy of whatever the word is, um, and then we're going to change temp, right? So that's what we're going to do. We're going to, um, oh, wait, one more thing. Quick, before we do that, let's make sure this compiles again. Um, so this does compile. Um, and there's that one more bug I mentioned, which we'll get to next, but let's just, uh, let's hold on that for a second. So um, um, let's finish this find word implementation, right? We want to, um, do this. We want to go over every, well, first of all, okay, first of all, wait, let's think about this. We're going over every word in the library. Every one of the 12,000 words is going to, is going to come in here. It's only worth checking uh, if one of the words meets this, this pattern that we're giving it. So we're giving it a pattern here, right? This is going to be the pattern like, like, like the D blank blank. Um, so if you look where we're calling this way down below, actually I did deep blank, but let me just keep it deep blank blank. Just to keep it, it's a smaller number of completions. that will be like dog and dad and dot, stuff like that. So we're going to call that thing and we're going to call it here. We've been typing in this code here. And we're, we're checking all 12,000 words in the library to see if they might possibly match that pattern. Well, one reason uh, that they might not match is that the links wouldn't be the same. So this is uh, a challenge for you. Um, Code up the code that would at least skip the words that were not the right length. So we want to check to see if, if every word in the library, if it's not even the right length of the pattern that we're giving it, uh, it's definitely not under consideration. So we should just skip that word. So give that a try and see if you can get that to compile. We're still not, we're still not doing anything, but I just want you to see if you can code it and have it compile. Okay, so here, so go ahead and do that. If, you, if, you're, if you're back now, um, I'll show you how that looks. We just want something simple like this. So what's the length? Well, it's S length. That's what we're doing. And one common thing that I like to do that's sometimes done by other people is to cache these things. So if you're gonna make a function call like length, um, I like to put it up here in a temporary because we know we're gonna use it 12,000 times, right? So rather than calling the length of this pattern string 12,000 times, it's gonna be the same answer every time. Instead of calling it 12,000 times, even though it's a fast routine, why not just store it here? That's something that helps the compiler make the code faster. So um, we'll do that, and then all we have to do is you have to check if the length. If the length equals, and then what? What are we checking it with? Well, it's a, it's a, we can either use w or we, or we can now use temp. Temp what? Temp's length, right? So that's what we want. We want, actually we want, the more, we're going to be adding more stuff in here, right? We only want that stuff to fire if the links are the same. I mean, otherwise there's no chance it's gonna be a pattern match. So let's just go ahead and try the next word. So let's see if that compiles, um, which it does. So that's the answer to the challenge. Let's take a look now and see what we really wanna do. Where, where are we in this code? I mean, we've got this, we're now here, we're comparing, let's, let's take a look here on the paper. We're comparing, um, you know, one of the words in this huge library, right? We've got this big library of 12,000 words. We've grabbed one of the words out, like dad. That's one of the words in the library. We've already checked that it's the same length as our pattern. Our pattern is D blank blank, right? Are these a match? And the answer is yes. We want this, these symbols, these blanks, to really match against any word. You know, we want it to match against D anything. But if it was, you know, Sam, we don't want to match against that for sure. So that's that's a no, but these should both be yeses. You know, D like dot, let's say dad and dot should both be yeses. Um, so one way to do that is to take every word that we pull from the library, we pull it out, we look at it, we check the length is the same, 
Okay, so it's a possible match. And then we take, we walk across this original pattern argument, and we look for any character that has what? This pattern dash in it. And if it does, we, we knock out this letter and write a dash in. This next character, oh, that has a dash. So let's take this next character in the word we're comparing and let's knock it out and put a dash in. So what we're gonna do is kind of reduce every word that we pull from the library back to the core pattern. And then we can check to see if they're the same. See, if you take Sam and do that, you're going to reduce this one to a dash and this one to a dash and you're gonna get S dash dash. And that is not going to match you know, the original pattern up here. Does that make sense? Um, if it doesn't, maybe try to stop and think about that and um, b before you go on, because we're going to code that, and you need to understand what we're coding to not be um, confused. So that is the challenge. Um, it is, and this right in here, we're going to add code right in here, that's going to walk over every letter of which. It's going to be every letter of temp. And it's going to try to replace every letter of temp for which there's a dash in this original pattern with a dash and then compare the two words. Okay, that's kind of a big challenge. Give it a try, okay? See if you can at least do part of it, like the walking over every letter. How are you going to do the loop to walk over every letter? And I'll give you a hint um, in a minute if you want it. And this is the hint. We're going to say for loop. We're going to use a counting for loop because we want to have that, that index so we can get at each letter in the word. We're going to say i from zero to what? To the length of the word, right? We want it to be, we've already computed it, it's already len. We know that the temp length is the same already because because we checked it right here. Um, and we're going to go up by one every time. Right. So here we're, we're checking every letter of s and we can also check every letter of temp. And what do we want to say? This is a good place to stop if you want to try on your own now. That's enough to get going. Uh, you're going to want to do something with s of i and something with temp of i. Right, that's kind of the that's kind of the clues, and um, this is what it is. If s of i is, and that's this double equals is the is the equality. It's not an assignment. If it is this character, that's the dash, the wildcard character. Then let's take the temp character in the same position i, and let's assign. This time it's an assignment. Let's assign dash to it. Okay, so these two operators are very different. One is saying, is this a dash in the original S pattern string um, versus saying, um, uh, uh, we're going to assign the dash to the temp. And there's one more thing I'll introduce here, which we started to do with this constant the for loop. Uh, it's not that common to just pass a string into functions, almost always, or well, in some design styles, the better way to do this is with a const string reference, okay? So it's a lot of typing, that's why I didn't introduce it right away, but it's the same as what we did here for this const word. Um, what it means is don't don't actually make me a copy of the string. Just, just send me a, a reference to the pointer, but let's make it a const reference because we know we're not going to change the pattern. And what that does, which is a really kind of a neat thing, is it protects you. Suppose you got this flipped around and you had this code, you checked the, if the temp had something and you assigned something to the S. Let me just show you, that should fail to compile for the same reason that it won't pass the const check. See, it's trying to do a read-only, it's trying to assign the read-only location. So if I did that right, that would be the same error right here, right? So we don't, we don't want that, we want to have the temp be the one be written. So when we put this constant up here, um, it helps us generate correct code. It helps, it helps prevent the case where we've, we've accidentally switched these two. So anything you can do in the code to prevent bad code from being compiled um, is useful. And so that compiles now here. So we're getting close to our slow version of this routine. Um, what else do we need? We're walking over every word in the library. We are kind of taking a copy of it and then modifying it by by writing over those wildcard characters. And then we want to compare it, right? So now, where is that going to be? That's going to be after looping over all the characters. So right here, right? This is the next place to enter code. Because we've we this is the thing that goes over every word in the library. Then we check to see if it's the same length. Then in here, we have already done the modifications. Now we can say, are these two things the same? Is S the same as temp? And if it is, let's just print it. 
And it's essentially the same like a print either one, it doesn't matter. So let's print that out. Whoops. And let's see if that works. Um, now we're going to get into the same trouble that I. Okay, so it compiles. Now we're going to hit this bug that I mentioned I noticed last time that we didn't solve, and I'll show you what it is. When we run it, this is what happens nothing. <laughs> and you might say, oh my gosh, so we made a huge bug. This is a result. It's, it's just my environment. It won't be the same for you. In my environment, um, I don't have, if you look, I didn't, I forgot actually to cop in, copy in the test library. Um, so that top, that top 12,000 words I didn't have in this directory. So if you look at the read from file lines in here, we need to fix up one bug. Um, we tried to open the file, right, with the file name. So it tried to open it, but we didn't check if it worked or not. That was our problem. So it's gonna, you can, you can, you can find this by doing um, some C out print statements. But the file has a routine called f is open. And we can just simply add that in there. So while the file is open and we're not done reading it, then you can read a line from it. Otherwise, um, the, we, even if it doesn't open, it, it, it won't tell us it's at the end of it. It's kind of a funny use of the API. I might have said that the, if the file's not open, it should always say it's at the end, but they decided to say if the file's not open, it's never at the end. Uh, in any case, we can protect against that case by checking for the open explicitly. And there's one more open that we need to check against when we read from the, uh, when you read the grid. We read both the grid and the, so F is open and, so that's just a bug to fix that prevent the file reader code that we wrote before from failing. So let's run that. Oh, we just forgot to put the uh, forgot to put the uh, parentheses there. Let me just run that. Um, oh, so we still have to. So now it, at least it runs, but we still have to copy the uh, the file in. So I have to copy it in from class. Um, so I copy my file in. Okay, so we're all set now, and I get to run it. And there we go. Oh, this is a great bug. Aha, so another challenge. What I said was really wrong. I Let's go back to the code and look. I said when we're looking for the matches here, this whole thing, all we're doing is called in find word. Remember when I said in here, I said, I said, if they're the same, it doesn't matter which one we print. Since we took the pattern, which was D dash dash, and we took every word in the library and we modified it um, to be... Uh, also D dash dash or whatever letter the word had in the library dash dash. And then what I said was if they're the same, and I said print it. And I said if they're the same, it doesn't matter which one we print. I was correct in saying that. However, that's not the word we want to print. We want to print the original word in the library. So here's the question to you. That's your challenge. Fix this print out print statement so that we don't get these uh, stupid D dash dashes. We get the original word that that represents the match for. Um, so go ahead and do that now. And that one, I think, is relatively straightforward. You just change this S to what? You just go back to www. That's really it. So you go back to the original word that you took the copy of before you started making changes to the, to the temporary. So you go back to this original word, and that's going to be much more interesting to look at from a user point of view. So here we go to run that, and there you go. There's all the words we get. A whole bunch. Even in our small library of 12,000 words, which is nothing like those internet libraries of 500,000 words, um, we still get a whole bunch of words. We can even see how many words by writing this into a file and counting it. And it's 56 words, because the first line is this print statement, and then it's 56 different matches, even in our little tiny library. So you can see we already have a lot of word choices, even in this small library, that'll be useful to create uh, fun little puzzles to demonstrate the, the concepts. Okay, this is a part two of this module. In the part two, we're going to take what we've done so far, which was writing a slow version of the pattern hash, and now we're going to make it fast. I'm filming this part two of this module um, on a very strange day in California. This is actually a uh, full daylight right now outside, but it's completely dark. <laughs> so we've had, we've had hottest temperature, and then we've had uh, fires, and now we have this really crazy orange smoke so uh, it's a good day to learn about programming let's go back to what we're trying to do we are reading from a library and let's use this analogy of of 
you know, a physical library, like in your city, you have a library of books. Let's say we have a library of words and there's this one shelf and we've read 12,000 words from this file and they're all in this shelf and they're in this master list of words. We make one word object and we keep doing this thing where we call push back. Remember that? We call push back on this list. Um, that's the master list of words. Um, and we want to support this idea of searching this library with a pattern, like any pattern, like D blank blank. And we want that to return any word that happens to be like maybe dad. And over here, there's a word dot. And down here, there's a word, um, you know, Don, your, your hat. Uh, so what we want to do to speed this up is to pre-compute all of the words that happen to match this pattern. We don't want to try to find them on the fly because that's very slow. We want to go through all the words in advance and put them in new lists that have just the words that match this pattern. So what we want is a list of only the words dad, dot, and Don in my kind of silly example. So we want this thing to be hashed and and return a new list of words that includes these as the elements. Now it's inefficient to try to copy the words all the time like this. So we're going to do something different, which is that we're going to, instead of making that first list of words as a list of words, we're going to make it a list of word pointers, okay? And so this is why we had to introduce that whole notion um, back in the previous module of, you know, what a reference is, what a pointer is, what an object is. We want to allocate a word somewhere in the computer memory, and this is going to be on the heap instead of the stack. And we're going to add a word called dad there, and we're going to add a word, you know, called, um, called the dot here. And those are going to be in this master word list, but they're going to be only in the master word list as pointers. So there's going to be a list of pointers to these words because that lets us do this. That lets us make another list that will be the list for all the D blank blank words. That will be another list of word pointers. And that will point to only this. This list points to all the words that we have. And this list will point only to the words that are in this pattern, right? So this list will have 12,000, and each of these lists might have anywhere from one to, you know, maybe 100. Maybe there's some patterns that, you know, have a lot of words, but it's not gonna be thousands because of the 12,000 words, they're gonna fall into different patterns, um, you know, with different letters. We also want to make, you know, we want every single combination. We also want a list like this. So which words is that gonna match? Well, it's gonna match dad. It might match did. Can you think of any other words? Uh, dud, maybe. We'll find out what other words end up matching that pattern. But we need a way to find all of the possible patterns of blanks and letters for every word in the library. And so that's the trick of the pattern hash. Um, and there's one, so there's one more handwritten slide I'll do before we jump to the code. Let's take a word, in the, every word in the library, like we're gonna read a word like dad. This is a pre-processing step. So we're introducing the notion of now pre-processing the library. We read the library in from the file. We make that master word list. That's what we want to do. Then we want to pre-process it, which means going through every word in the library and finding every possible pattern of blanks and letters for that word and then registering that in a special list of those words that match that pattern. So do you see what we're doing? We're going to end up making this ginormous hash map that's not going to be hashed just by the names of the words. It's going to be hashed by the string that has every possible pattern of words. And then we can look up that hash map very fast and find only the three or 10 or 20 or 100 words that match that pattern. So that's the idea of what we're going to do. And we're going to jump to code in just a minute and you'll start to see how it, how it works. But here's the first theory is how do you take a word like, like this? Any word in the library, let's say it's this word dad, how do you find all the combinations? What are we looking for? Well, we want to start with, with 
We know that blank, blank, blank is something kind of interesting. That's like you don't know any letters. You know that D, you know, blank, blank is something of interesting. D blank D is something of interest. Um, you know, blank, blank D and all the way up to finally dad. Now, how do you know how to do this part? Do you have any feeling for how to make all those and how many of them there are? Well, this has to do with binary numbers. And the easiest way to do this is to look at how you count in binary. Um, there are eight combinations of either mask, you know, this, this, this blank, thinking of it as a mask, or, or a letter. And this is the way it works. Let's count in binary up to eight. You'd start 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. And when you add one in binary, what do you do? You don't, all you have is zeros and ones. You don't have a way to do a two. So you do just like you do in base 10 when you get to nine and you add one to it, you kick a one to the next place. So when you add one to this, you go zero, one, and then this goes back to zero again. So this is a zero in binary. That's a one in binary. That's a two in binary. This is a three in binary. What's next? Can you think of what's next? You add one to this, well, it's like adding one to 99. It would go to one, zero, zero, right? So in the same way in binary, adding one to, to three here gives a one, zero, zero. This is four, and then you just repeat it, five, six, seven. So we need to generate all of these uh, patterns. And then for each one of these patterns, we're going to mask, and we can do it either way. We'll, we're, we can say when there's a one, we're gonna mask out that letter. So the pattern for this particular count of, of I from zero to seven is going to be, we're gonna leave the D, we're gonna mask out that middle letter, and we're gonna leave the D here. So we're gonna create a pattern like this when we get to here, and then we're gonna find we're gonna add that to the hash table, the pattern hash table, so that this word, D-A-D, the -D, dad word, will be indexed and stored under this pattern. We're also gonna store dad under all these other patterns, like this one, well, let's do a different one. Let's do, let's do one, one, zero. So this one, we're gonna mask out the first letter, the second letter, but we're gonna leave the third letter. So this is gonna be, we're gonna register the word dad under this pattern as well. So that's that's the whole goal here. And this is this is pretty much the the, the tricky part of understanding the, the concept of what we're doing. And then um, now we're gonna jump in and we're gonna look at the actual code, how to, how to get this done. So let's do the first part of that, which is to change the word, the master word list, the master word vector. We're going to change that from storing words to storing pointers to words. And so let me show you how that works. So let's look back at the type up of that. Here we go, we've said a words this new object, that, this, new, this new type that we've defined called capital W words right here. We've defined that to be a vector of word. Now that's problematic because the vector moves these words around and you really, it's really difficult to work with objects where the compiler's moving them all the time because if you point, if you ever try to capture a reference or a pointer to that object, um, it will move on you unexpectedly and that's just hard to handle. So a typical design pattern is to make this instead a word pointer. Now I'm gonna go ahead and use a naked pointer here. You can also use a unique pointer. Um, I think it's a controlled enough situation where we can just have a naked pointer because I know when I'm going to be allocating this list of words and I know when I'm going to be freeing the list of words, deallocating it. So I can be very careful to make sure I free all those. But in general, you might have people uh, prefer this style, unique pointer of word, right? So that, that would be a way to do a similar idea but with a a safer pointer, and all that unique pointer does, is it, it's not that complicated. All it's doing is it's just a regular pointer except that it calls delete by itself automatically. So if we don't do the naked pointer, um, then we go back to this. Uh, just that I just have to be careful to make sure that we ourselves call the delete on the word. So, um, so what we need to do is go through and look at where we're using this words. Um, and here's, here's pretty much the only place we use it. It's this master list. You know, this is the library object. That's the top of it. This is the bottom of it. In that library object, we have this master list of words, words underscore. Now let's go through and look at all the uses of that words. Here's one. This is in the find word. Now this is actually code that we're gonna get rid of. This, this entire code in here, all this stuff, is, was, our, was, our, was our slow way of doing this, right? So I'm just gonna go ahead and get rid of it. We don't need this anymore. We're gonna replace this with new code to go here. It's gonna be nice and fast. So this was where we were going over every word and manually checking to see if it, if it matched the pattern by doing this masking of the, of, the, of the different characters 
based on the, 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 the dashes in the pattern string. So let's just hold off on that right now and not bother fixing that up. Let's look at where else words is being used. So here's a place. This is a compute stats. So now if words is a pointer to a bunch of, pointer to a word instead of an actual word itself, what we're gonna get in this iterator is gonna be a const, because we don't wanna modify it, a const pointer to a word. Now there's one detail here in C++ when you change from an object, it used to be just a word W without the pointer, right? It used to be like that. So uh, you would access things uh, w dot word dot length, right? When the W becomes a pointer, there's a slightly different syntax. All you do is you change the dot to a little arrow. It just means that W is no longer an actual object, it's a pointer. And so to get at something inside W, you don't just say dot, you say, you, you do this dereference pointer operator. Um, you'll see this a lot, I think you'll get used to it. Maybe it's a little awkward to see it first, but, but that's very common very common pattern, so you'll see that you'll see that a lot. Um, all right, so this should fix up this code. Let's keep looking at where else is words being used. So here we go, here's another words.size. Now it's, that's, that's gonna be fine. Um, that's going to be just um, returning the size of the number of pointers rather than the size of the number of objects, but that will still be the, the, the same 12,000 size. Then we're gonna return the word, but now here, look what we're doing. Now this thing right here, is one member of the master list of words, right? Master vector of words. And that will now return a pointer rather than an actual word. So we need to change again, this little dot to an arrow. Um, let's see where else we're using the word. Now here's where we're adding it. This is more interesting. We're doing a words pushback. Now here, we're gonna be adding something, but we said now words is no longer a vector of words itself, it's a vector of pointers. And so we're gonna say a new word. That's how you allocate something on the heap, is you say, I want a new one of these things. And it doesn't put it on the stack anymore. And if you want a review of the stack on the heap, go to the previous modules. Um, it's a way, it's this extra scratch pad of memory that's actually, in fact, down low in the address space, but doesn't really matter. It's this extra big area of memory that you can pull from and you can allocate all kinds of objects there, gigabytes, of objects can come out of there. And we're gonna make a word and we're gonna have it be, we're gonna have it live in there. And the cool thing is that once we allocate it like this, it does not move, it stays there. So we can point to it from different places, like different lists of words that we want to point into that word. So we're gonna push back a new word there. And then we're going to, um, yeah, this is the other word map that we're gonna be replacing. We're gonna change this word map, right, with our with our pattern hash. So for now, let's, um, Let's just come, let's leave that out. Let's not add something to that word map. Let's leave it empty for now. Where else have we used words? So we wanna look for where else we have words being used. Uh, and that should be it. Now, I told you we did this, we did this allocate, this new, right? Whenever there's a new, you have to have a spidey sense. Um, you need to either have it be thrown into a unique pointer that will do the delete yourself, uh, I mean, on, on its own, or you need to do the delete yourself. And so we will do the delete ourselves here just to show that method. And we'll put it in the library destructor, okay? And we will do a loop. We will say for, and um, here we can say word pointer w in words delete w. That's all we have to do. We're just taking all the words, and there's a there's some shorthands for this later, but this is just kind of to show more obviously what it's doing. For every word that we've allocated into this words list, we're going to just delete it here. Um, so there's kind of two overheads. You either have to do this or you have to have a unique pointer for every word and then manage the unique pointer. So those are the two ways to deal with memory in a, in a nice way. So let's see how this does if this compiles. G++ minus OA, A dot C. And it compiles and it runs. And we've got an answer. But since we commented out this thing here, uh, when we call find word now um, at the bottom, we call this find word. Um, we uh, generate um, no output. So let's make sure that we've changed all the occurrences of this words underscore um, master list of words, you know, to the new form where it's a pointer now, instead of just a word, it's gonna be a, a, a pointer. And when you call new, it allocates the object and then it gives you, a, it returns a pointer back to it. So all these words are now pointers of words rather than words. And we're gonna change the word map itself now to be not a map of string to word, but a map of string to 
words, okay? So no, look at that. So we're gonna change so that when we look up a pattern now, like D dash dash, we're gonna store all the possible words that match that pattern. And we're gonna store it in a, a vector that we call words, that, that's, that's a vector of a bunch of pointers to words. So let me draw a picture of that. I did it before, but just now that you see how this code looks, really what we're doing is allocating a bunch of individual words on the heap. So really they're just sort of scattered out here in memory. You don't really know where they are. Um, there's one word list, which is this master words, which is itself a vector. It's a vector of what? Pointers to these words, right? So as you find these words, they point to, to all of them. And whoops, that was supposed to be this one. Um, we're also going to have this word map, which we're calling word map. It's a pointer from string to a, a words vector. So we're gonna look up a pattern like D blank blank, and it's gonna return us another words list, just like this master list, only it's not gonna be the master list, it's gonna be a, a list of words, pointers to words, that are only those words out of the 12,000, there's 12,000 of these words, it's only gonna be a list of, let's, let's, let's say it's three, the, the specifically three words that you know match that pattern. So that's what we're trying to get to. So it's gonna be this kind of complex data structure with this pool of, of 12,000 of these linked. Every one of those 12,000 is gonna have a, an element in this master words list and then various combinations of them and kind of interesting patterns. You can't really predict how that's gonna work based on the letters and the, and the, and the, and the words are gonna exist in different of these word lists. So there's gonna be a lot of duplicates. There's gonna be a lot of these word lists for different patterns that will point to the same word, right? You know, if you think of a word like string, it's gonna match a lot of patterns. You know, S dash 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 dash, ST dash 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 dash. Those are all gonna match string or, or, uh, or any other word like that. Um, so let's jump back to the code then and let's start to change the word map itself. Uh, so word map is now gonna be pointing to, um, we can leave this, this is the master list. Let's put that comment in here. Let's say master list, well I can say vector, master vector of words. And this one's going to be our pattern hash word map, okay. Um, such as D blank blank returns vector of all dad, you know, dad, dud, etc. Something like that. Give you an idea of, of what that thing is doing. So let's see where that is. So here we go. Um, the is word, we can still leave this as it is, that's fine. Um, Let's go ahead and eliminate that. Um, now, here, we're gonna put, we're gonna read the from file and we're gonna put back. This is kind of tricky now. So let's make a new routine here. Let's call it something like um, create pattern hash. Okay, and let's put in there, we, we don't wanna put just the string line. We wanna actually put the word itself. So we want, instead of creating the word here as a temporary and then pushing it on, um, let's actually make a, a, an official temporary variable here where we're gonna put we're gonna do it like this. We're gonna actually create the, the, the word here. Okay, and then we're gonna push push that word back and then we're gonna create the pattern hash around that word as well. And then we're not gonna even use this at all. That's gonna go away. So let's go see what this create pattern hash will be like. It's gonna be this is the name and it's gonna take as reference now, we can use this idea of a const word w because we wanna, the purpose of this routine in here now is going to be to create into the hash table, all those possible patterns. Um, and this is a little tricky bit of code that has to do with that counting. Remember I said we had to do the binary counting and here's the way it works. Um, I'll show you a little bit and then I'll ask as a challenge, I'll ask you to do some more. Let's do the length equals word. Now what is the word? How do you find the length of a word? Uh, we probably should add a routine if we don't have it already to the word that would be make this easier. Let's just say int length const return word length, okay. That kind of stuff is pretty common just to make um, to make the routines easier to make these make these little objects like like a word easier to use. And you can just call len on it anytime you want and you'll get the length 
of the underlying word. And that'll always return zero if there's no word yet. So this is safe to call this, this, this length function um, anytime for the lifetime of a, of a word. So let's go back to the, the create pattern hash that we were adding. So here's this length, right? What we wanna do is we want to go over all the possible patterns from zero to, to i less than len, and we wanna do i plus plus, right? Um, and what we're going to do is, um, let me print a little bit out here and we'll show you what we're doing. So here we go, we're gonna say pattern hash on um, w word. Okay, first let's do that, let's do that here. And then let's, in here let's say, and let's put i. Um, this is going to show you how, what we're trying to do with this counting every time and to give you an idea. Um, so here's the, the challenge is go ahead and run that, type something in like that and run it and let's see if we can get that, uh, that to work and then we'll, um, we'll go from there. So here we go. And it goes crazy, right? For every word that we're adding to the library, it's gonna count um, up to the, uh, the size of the word. And let's put that into a file so we can um, look at it. And let's look at the results for since we're, we're doing this, 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 this dad word, just as an example word. Um, let's go back and look at that on the paper here. Um, so here's the dad. Remember for dad, we wanted to actually do, we wanted to count all the way from zero, zero, zero up to one, one, one. We, want, we wanted to generate all those patterns. So here I'm generating the patterns from what? It's going from zero, one, and two. So that's not even quite right. We actually want to generate all the patterns. Uh, so this is a challenge for you. How do you get, this is the length of the word. The length of the word is three. How do you go from this to all these patterns, right? We want actually to get eight patterns for this word. If the word were four letters long, like let's say the word were called verb and you had four, you're gonna be counting from zero, 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 all the way in binary, all the way up to, guess what, 15, which is one, 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 one in binary. We're gonna to wanna to create and do work and make a pattern in our hash table for each of these patterns that's 16 of them, right? So what's the relationship between the length of the, the word, dad is three long and we want eight things, verb is four long and we want 16. Can you think of what that relationship is? It's a power of two, right? We wanna take two to the power of the length like this. And um, there's different ways to do power and um, num patterns, let's call it, equals two or one shifted up by the length. You can also say two to the power of length. That's also a way to do it. Um, this is a, this just basically means take a one and every time you shift left by a character in binary, you multiply times two. So, so shifting by, by length uh, gives you the power. So if you, if you were to shift three times, you're multiplying by eight. If you were to shift four times, you're multiplying by 16. That's just like shifting by one position in base 10 gives you multiply by 10 and shifting two positions gives you multiply by two. There's also, if that one looks a little strange to you, you can also go investigate. This is going to be homework for you. You can look at the pow function, right? You can take power of two to the length. It's going to be something like that. And that would be fine to use also. Um, this is just a shorthand that it, this pattern is used often enough in programming that people get comfortable with this meaning power of, for integer powers, um, this is a common shorthand. So you can um, either use that or the pow function. The point is now we're going to do number of patterns. So now let's not go over length. Let's go over num patterns and this is going to kind of explode right any kind of power relationship like this is going to be uh, going to be pretty powerful pretty pretty big and you're going to see what's going to happen some of the words are going to be big they're going to be you know 12 12 letter words we're going to be trying to create two to the 12th like 4,000 patterns for that word so why and the answer is because we're really trying to pre-compute all that we're trying to pre-compute for like a 12 letter word every possible combination of of wildcard characters in that 12 letters Right, that's the whole point of this pattern hash is to pre-compute all the possible matches so that when we do all this work and we save that in the hash table, at runtime we can just call it and right away we're going to get the answer of which words match this pattern. But it does mean that this may be a little bit computationally slow and we'll find out for this library of 12,000 words exactly how slow that might be and if we need to maybe 
uh, take some measures to make that not quite so comprehensive. For example, you don't really need to do every possible pattern. Um, but let's see, you know, this is an example where you don't need to necessarily optimize ahead of time. Let's just see if the computer will do it and store all these patterns. And if it can, we'll just go with it. We don't have to be that optimal if the computer can just handle the work for us. So let's run this thing. Let's clear this, let's run it. And let's, again, we can just run it to the screen first and you'll see it'll go crazy. See, look, these numbers are starting to look really huge, right? So let's run that into a file and let's look at the dog case again. Or, sorry, dad case, it doesn't matter, dog dead. So here, now we're doing all eight, you see. So that's the kind of behavior we want. We wanna be able to then do work for each of these. Let's keep going and let's generate now, let's just not print this out. Let's start to generate that pattern. So what do we want for that pattern? We want to say, let's start with the string. Let's call it temp or something. And that's going to be the original word, word, right? And we're gonna be modifying this thing. Now let's go over all the characters. And here we're gonna use maybe J, a different, different letter. Let's go over all the characters um, in the length of the word and then J++. Now, if one of those, <laughs> if one of those bits is on in the in I in the pattern, I is like the mask. Then we're gonna do, we're gonna replace the temp with a dash. That may be hard to understand. Let me see if I can approach that a little more slowly. So here, let me let me draw that on a picture. Here we are again with our phrase. Let's use maybe let's use dog. That's easier. It's got three different letters, and let's here's the, here's the pad. Here's the numbers that we're going up. Right. Remember this is the this is i. This is the value of i. It's going to have. It's going to be going from zero to seven, um, because that's this part here in the code right here where it's saying uh, that's this part. And the number of patterns is going to be. Remember it's going to be eight. It's going to be two to the third. The length is three for dog, and the number of patterns is going to be eight. So i is going from zero to seven. And then, um, and then we're going to be, um, so then for every one of those seven, other ones patterns, like zero, one, one, we're going to take a pattern and we're going to look at it and we're going to say, well, the idea is that here's the dog, zero, one, one is the binary number for three. Whenever there's a one, we're going to wipe out that, that letter. If there's a one here, we're going to wipe out that letter. And we're going to end up with, with, with D dash dash. So the whole point of doing this iteration here is to generate every possible possible combination of patterns of the D so that our lookup table will be complete, right? So let's let's so we're not too far away in terms of actual code. It's a little bit of a conceptual leap, but I think you'll um, you'll see how this works in just a second. We're only a few lines away from from actually finishing this. Um, if you want to try, there's a challenge. If you want to try to code that uh, where you just print out the the, the word with the, the hash, then, um, then give it a try. So here we go. So we're going to say if I is, the, is, the, is this pattern mask, um, <laughs> let me see, there's different ways to do this. Let me do it this way. Let me shift it down by J bits, and then we're going to and it with one. <laughs> uh, let me, let me, I, I, think I, I think I need to draw that on the paper, right? That needs to be a little more, a little more clear. So remember, here's the thing. So here's I, I is like three, right? Right now, and three in binary is zero, one, one. And here's our, here's our dog. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take i, we're gonna, for j equals zero, one, and two, we're gonna shift i down by this many bits and then take the last bit. It's a way of getting every bit of, of the i. Um, that's all the code is doing. So we're gonna, we're, gonna, we're gonna take the last bit and see if it's one. And if it's a one, we're gonna, ma we're gonna mask off these. So we're gonna mask off these two letters like we said before. And we're doing it by shifting i down by this many bits every time and then looking at the last bit of it. And the looking at the last bit of it part is this and one part. That just that just um, looks at the very last bit of the of the number. So if the last bit is a zero, this will be this whole thing will be false. If the last bit's a one, this whole thing will be true. 
So what we want to do in here, if, if, if it's true, we want to mask off the temp. And we're going to take one of the letters of temp. It's going to be the jth letter of temp. We're going to mask it off to this, to this wildcard string that we have. So look at that and see if that looks anything like something you understand or my work. Um, we, we can probably eliminate this, but let's replace this with a print of the final word temp. Okay, so let's run this and see if we're anything close to interesting. And here we go. So let's run that into a file. And we're gonna look at, oh look, so it takes a while. It takes a few seconds to run, right? So let's look again, let's, let's do the dog example. Pattern hash on dog, so here we go. So this is what we wanted. We wanted, we wanted every possible combination of wildcard characters in dog. And, and, and we got it by counting from zero up to seven. We go dog, and then we go blank OG, then D blank G, then blank blank G. So you, can you think of any other pattern of dog that we didn't cover? And the answer should be no. There's really only eight patterns. And this gets more complicated. Like look, the next word here is build. That's gonna have two to the fifth or 32 combinations. So look at all these, look at all these different patterns. So what we're saying is these are all the patterns that we want to store in the pattern hash table for quick lookup. So we wanna be able later to say, find me all the words that have B blank, blank, blank D. And we want build to be one of those answers. Now it's not gonna be the only one, but it will be one. So when we're reading the library and we get to the word build, we wanna enter build into the hash table under this pattern. Other words will also be entered in the hash table under this same pattern, but probably not these other patterns. So every word gets this kind of interesting combination of, of mask patterns entered in the hash table. And the result is that we're gonna have a hash table at the end that you can just look up any pattern and right away, you're gonna see all these words that match that pattern just instantly. And we're gonna use that function over and over and over again to, um, you know, to fill in our crossword puzzles to, 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 to create the crossword puzzles. Okay, with that, we're getting closer. So here we go. When we create this map for every one of these patterns, what we wanna do, let's go back to the word map, right? That's the thing we're trying to fill in here is this word map. We're trying to take this word map and we're trying to add things to it. And what do we wanna to add to it? We wanna put in under what index? Well, the index is gonna be this temp, right? This thing, this string that we just made, which we can go down here in the, um, in the output file is, are all these individual crazy strings with the with the different wildcard patterns. Those are each gonna be the index into the word map. And what do we wanna put as the object that we're putting in there? Well, that's gonna return a list of words or a list of word pointers really. Um, so what we're gonna to wanna to do to that is we're gonna to wanna to push back and what? This is a challenge. What, what, do we, what do we push back? What do we put in here to, to make sure that this word that we're creating a pattern hash for, so we're, we're calling this once per word. So this whole thing is getting called 12,000 times when we read the library and it calls this create pattern hash on every word. And for every word, it's finding all the possible patterns. And for each possible pattern, it's going to add that pattern indexed by the pattern. And it, what do we want to add? We want to add a pointer back to, and the answer is, um, it's not so hard, just the word. So that's it. We just add a pointer back to the word object. And that's all we need because the word object itself has things like the actual string of the word, um, maybe other things like the point value of the word that we add later. But it's that object of the word that we want to index with this pattern map. So that really creates the entire pattern, mash, uh, pattern hash. And so now all we have to do is use it. So let's go back to the final. Here's the use case. Here's the main, right? This is what we're trying to do. We're trying to find all the words that have D blank blank. And we did it before in a slow way, remember that? And then we, I took it all out and I said, hey, we're gonna put some new code in here. So now what is that new code? That new code is gonna look like this. It's going to say, um, let's get an iterator and let's find, and in, in, in the word map, let's find that string. And this string could now have, have wildcards in it. And then let's, let's, let's iterate over that for, and let's do it as a comp. We can do const word pointer w in it,
Okay, let's compile that and we'll see where we are. Ah, we've got some errors. Um, so let's find out what it's complaining about. Line 82, let's go look at what that is. That is here um, where we're pushing back the W. Ah, and here's the problem, it has to do with const. We have said, this routine is saying, uh, let's create a pattern hash with a const word, right? Um, the problem is that we've defined this word map to be a map pointing to not const words, but actual words. So someone could later on use the word map to modify the words. Because in here, look, we've said it, we've, we've said a word map is a, is, is a, is indexed by a string and has a, a bunch of words in it. And the words themselves are vectors to not const words, but actual word pointers that you could use to modify the object. So it won't let us put a const word pointer into that object. So we could solve that a couple ways. We could make a new structure that, that that's a that's a pointer only to constant, uh, a constant pointers to words. Um, or for the time being, um, what I'll do just for now is uh, just remove this const. It's a bit of a hack. Um, we're gonna just not be that concerned with the const nature of the word map right now. We could we could fix that up later if we want to. So that's gonna run and gonna get us back to. Um, back to where we are before, where now we're actually, we can't see it really, but we've, we've created, that really runs a long time, doesn't it? So uh, we've really created um, the full pattern hash. Now let's look at the find word, right? So let's go back down to the file. This is our original use case, was find word. And if we look at what we're trying to do, remember we had this code in here that did it slow before. Now we're gonna do it fast. So we're gonna, um, we're gonna do this, we're gonna essentially steal this same code right here um, and, and put it here and modify it slightly. We're gonna look up the pattern. S is this pattern including wildcards now. It's not just a word with no, it, it's, gonna have, um, it's gonna have patterns allowed. We're gonna find it in our pattern hash table. Um, if we get it, then we can return it. And we don't just return true now, um, we're gonna return um, Oh, we don't have a return type there yet, don't we? Oh, that's right, we were just printing it. So for now, we're just printing out what the word is. So we're gonna print out um, the word. And um, these iterators are a little tricky. When you get an iterator out of a map, it gives you both things. It gives you both the key and, and the value. And, and one of them is called first, and one of them is called second. And so what we're gonna to wanna to do is something like uh, dot second, um, might be an arrow second. I always forget with these iterators; they're a little tricky. Um, and then you, um, and then you, we're gonna, we're gonna. That's gonna be the word pointer itself, which we're going to then take probably the word element out of it. So let's see if that compiles. This may not work because there's a little bit of uh, trickiness here. Um, right. So let's 41. Oh, return false. I see return statement with a value. Oh yeah, yeah. We're doing this as a void. So let's just. Let's just not do anything in this case. Later on, we're going to return the word. For now, we're just printing. Um, we're just, we're just. Oh yeah, this is all messed up, isn't it? So for this lecture, we're just gonna leave this void still. Um, we're just gonna print things. So instead of, if, if it's not there, we're just gonna return false. So why don't we just write it this way. If it's not, if it's actually present, um, then what we're gonna do was, remember what we're gonna, what do we return if the, if the map hits? It's not just one word, it's a, it's a vector of words, right? So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna, inside here, if it hits, we're going to print out all the words that match that pattern. So it's gonna be something like this, word pointer, and it could be a const word actually. Uh, pointer in um, in it. Now the iterators are tricky. They return two things. They return a first and a second. Remember, go back to the to the original thing about hash tables. Um, the iterator for a map returns both the key and the value. And to get the key, you get the you call first. And to get the value, you call second, like this on the iterator. Um, that's going to return the vector of words. So 
this I think will compile these. Sometimes these iterators are a little tricky, so you have to try a few things on them and see. Uh, so what we're trying to do is we're trying to get the vector of words that match um, this pattern that we've used to, 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 to index the table. So and then for each one, let's write it out. So let's let's do maybe a space and then let's write out the words word value, okay? And let's let's not put the end of line until maybe here. Okay, so for each pattern, it will write um, all the words on one line. We didn't have to do it that way, but that's just uh, to make it easier if we're gonna run a lot of these patterns. So let's compile that and it, um, oh, I just forgot the, uh, the standard out um, stuff. So let's compile that again and it runs and let's try it. Oh, wait, wait, okay, we need to, we need to um, remove the printing in here. Let's take all this printing out that we were doing. We don't need to print all this temporary stuff. We're, we're actually doing the work now of putting that pattern into the hash table. So let's go back and compile that and run it. And what does it do? It has to do all the reading, right? So right now it's running all the read stuff. Uh, it's reading it, it's creating all the pattern hash for all the words, which is, which is pretty big. Um, and then it's done finally. And then it returns all the words. So look, so there it all is. Um, so now it takes a little longer to run our program because we're doing all this pre-processing on the library. So there's an upfront cost uh, which is not zero, and in fact, when you write it, when you read a big library in, it can be you know a minute. So that's when you want to multi-thread that or have other ways to speed that up. Um, but for our purposes here, we're going to just leave it like this. So it'll, every time we run the program now, it's going to take you know four or five seconds to, to load the program, to, to load the hash table, um, and then we print out, and there we go. Here's all the here's all the words on the library that match that pattern. Let's just do another kind of let's just run a couple more patterns just for fun. Uh, we did that one already. Let's do. Um, yeah, I'm just making these up, you know, S, S, T, blank, blank, D, you know, and then we're going to do blank, oh, sorry, uh, blank, A, you know, B, C, D, A, C, blank or something. I'm not sure if those will hit or not, but let's just try it. So here we go. Again, it has to load the library, so we'll have to wait for that. Maybe we will shorten that. <laughs> Goodness. Gonna... Gonna be a lot to wait for every time. And there we go, stand and stood. And that's all that found. Oh, and there were no patterns for blank, B, A, C, blank. Okay, so that's the end of this lecture. Um, now we're getting exciting. We're almost to the point when we can, we can finish the entire purpose of the course, which is to read the grid in and then um, finish designing the entire puzzle. And we're gonna call this routine a lot that we just wrote here um, in this module. Um, but next we have to work with the grid itself. We're going to go back to reading the grid in and we're going to look at how do you look at the different sorts of slots in the grids and we're going to call those spans and we're going to call them slots and we're going to talk about how to actually do the work to find the different words that fit into those into those slots and spans um, and so that's the object of the next module so we'll see you there.